Hi, this is Simon Obstall and welcome to another tutorial for Blackmagic Fusion. So somebody asked me how I would go about adding a bevel to the Fusion 3D Cube. And I thought it would be a great opportunity to do a little introduction to the Custom Vertex tool, which has countless powerful possibilities, but which takes a bit of getting your head around when you first encounter it. Now here's an example where I took a simple cube and used a couple of custom vertex tools to create this diving board structure. But this isn't going to be a design tutorial, it's just going to be an explanation of the theory behind the tool, so you can start your own experiments with it. So let's take a closer look. So the first thing I want to do is to make a cube, so I'm going to use the 3D shape tool, switch to cube, and I'm going to keep that size at one. So this is important for what we're about to do. So that looks like that. Just so we can get a better feel for the geometry of this, I'm going to import a texture and I'm going to add a blin and I'm just going to pipe that into the shape like that. It just gives us a better feel for what's front and what's back and so on. So I also want to turn on under 3D options, turn on the lighting again. That just gives us a little bit more of a sense of the geometry. And now it's not relevant to this tutorial except in terms of showing you the dimensions of this space, but I've set up some 3D text here. So this zero is zero on the z-axis and this is negative 0.5 on the z-axis and this is positive 0.5. And the reason I've done that is because those numbers are going to be important to what we're trying to do here. So let us just now add to this shape a custom vertex tool. And this is going to be where all the interesting stuff takes place. Now let's just take a really simple example of this. What I'm going to do is on the Z position here, I'm going to type max open brackets, zero comma PZ close brackets. And I want you to look what's happened. Now the back of our cube, so everything backwards from zero has disappeared and we're only getting the section between 0 and 0.5. It's basically saying that chop off anything below 0. And we could do it the other way around. We could type min, and we'd get the section that goes back from 0 to the back of the cube. So let's undo that and set that back to PZ. And then now let's look at creating a basic bevel. So before that, I want to just set up some labels for our number values. So that first number value I'm going to call threshold, the second number value I'm going to call bevel, and the third number value I'm going to call subdivisions. So let's come to our numbers here, and you'll see those names have been assigned to those sliders. And what I want to do is I want to come to my shape here, and I want to publish that subdivisions value come back to my custom vertex and connect that subdivision slider to the shape subdivisions. So now I can control those subdivisions via this slider and it'll become obvious why I'm doing that in just a moment. So I'm just going to set up some values for these first two sliders. I'm going to have 0.45 for the threshold and 0.75 for the bevel. So remember our threshold is N1, our bevel is N2. So I'm coming back to the position expressions. So for the X position, I'm going to enter a conditional. So if open brackets, PZ is greater than N1, so that's greater than our threshold. So I'm measuring there the depth of the box using that PZ value. PX times N2. So there I'm multiplying the X position value by N2, which is our bevel amount comma, px, close brackets. So that's saying, if that condition is not met, then just simply leave px as it was. So now, if you look, we have got a beveled front edge, or an x bevel for our shape. And we can adjust the amount of that bevel using the bevel control. So we can bevel it all the way into zero if we want, and beyond, in fact. So let's try and get a feeling for what's going on here. I'm going to come to the 3D options and I'm going to turn on vertex normals. And that allows us to see all the vertices in our object. Now, to simplify things, I'm going to reduce the number of subdivisions down to 
two, and it allows us much more easily to, to understand, to visualize this. So let's just briefly turn off custom vertex and discuss what a 3D object is. So a 3D object is made up of polygons and the intersections of those polygons are called vertices. And that's what we can affect using the custom vertex tool. And you, you, you can see here, we've got three vertices all together along each edge. Actually, I just called them intersections there, but of course they're not. They're the corners where the polygons meet rather than the, the lines where the polygons meet, which has, we have a different name altogether. So let's, let's turn our custom vertex tool back on again and see how that affects what we've done here. So if we look at our expression, what we're saying is that any vertices that have a positional value greater than 0.45 should be multiplied by N2, which is 0.75. So obviously in this case, the vertices on the front face have all been affected, but none of the others have. And that's because 0.45 is greater than zero and less than 0.5. If we increase the threshold value above 0.5, none of the vertices get affected because we're no longer in that range. So what is happening to those vertices? Well, it should be obvious that the vertices in the middle don't get affected because their value is zero. These, these ones here have an X value of zero because they're at zero on X. This value here, is a positive value. So the values along this edge are all positive. So those values have been decreased by the bevel value because we're multiplying by 0.75. You'll notice that if we increase the bevel value, we move them out the other way. So what about the pixels on the other side? Well, obviously they have a default negative value. And when we m apply our multiplier, that is going to bring them in or out in the opposite direction to the ones with the positive value. So now I want you to look what happens when I enter a negative threshold value. In other words, I set the threshold to be behind zero and in this region back here. So let's go for negative 0.25 or something like that. And you'll see now that all the vertices in advance of that threshold value have had that same calculation applied to them. So even these ones in the middle. And if I were to set the value to negative two, you'll see that all the vertices have had that same operation applied. So it also obviously depends on the subdivisions because at the moment, our bevel is starting in the middle of the object. So let's just double the number of subdivisions and you'll see that our bevel has moved forward. And if we increase them to eight, you'll see it moves further forward still. So the subdivisions are effectively a control for the depth of the bevel. So let's just turn off these vertex normals and let's just complete our bevel, which we can do by copying that expression and pasting it into the Y value there and just swapping the PX for PY. And now you'll see we've got a bevel on all of those front faces and we can adjust that using our bevel control like that. What we could also do is copy our custom vertex and paste it and then just change these numbers so instead of if PZ is greater than N1, let's do if PZ is less than N1, both of those. And then we just need to adjust our threshold value. And you can see we're affecting our back face like so. So we've got a, a bevel on the back as well as on the front. And you'll notice too that, that we can actually have fun with that, with that threshold value. And we can start making an interesting, it's like an old fashioned TV, this. It's, it's, it's quite an interesting shape. So there's a lot of fun we can have with the custom vertex tool once we get to grips with, with what it's doing here. And just finally, I want to show you a fun trick we could do with the color. So let's enter an expression for the green. So I'm going to do if open brackets, PZ is greater than N1, comma, zero, comma, one, close brackets. And so what that's done is it's colored all those areas that are forward of the threshold value. Another thing we could do is affect the alpha. So if I cut that and reinstate the green value, so that's VCG, and then just paste that value into the alpha, you'll see that we fade everything forward of the threshold value. So that's also very useful. Now there are a couple of important points I want to make before we finish. The first of which is that the relevant values 
for the custom vertex are the actual real-world positions of the object. So, for example, if I take that shape and I come to its translation and I start messing with the translation, I'm also messing with the, with the values that I've entered for the custom vertex. Sometimes this can be useful, but that's obviously not going to work if I want to keep that bevel. So what you'd need to do is actually add a 3D transform after any custom vertex action, and then you can move the object without actually changing its shape. And the other point I want to make is that when we start doing some of these complicated things, you'll notice that we're stretching the texture map and it's starting to look not very good at all. And then we have to start getting a little bit clever with how we actually remap the result. So after our last custom vertex, we would, for example, add a UV map tool and then possibly switch to cube map or something, just try and get it to then map to our new shape like so. Otherwise, the stretching of the material all looks a bit too obvious and that's just not very good to look at. So I hope that's been interesting and it's set you off on a journey of discovery of the custom vertex tool. Thanks very much for watching.